Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Fearsome Marine Predator Scientists in Chile recently discovered the remains of one of the largest marine predators this world has ever seen. Bones of the prehistoric monster were found in the middle of one of the driest places on Earth. The fossilized creature was dug out of the sand of the Atacama Desert, a barren wasteland of dirt and stone. Even though the desert is currently an inhospitable nightmare, it was once at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. And for that reason, scientists have been able to discover the remains of lots of ancient ocean reptiles. This specific extinct reptile was a pliosaur, something with an even more powerful bite than the famous T-Rex. The pliosaur inhabited this part of the ocean 160 million years ago. Archaeologists found the remains of its jaw, a piece of tooth, and several limb fragments. Rodrigo Otero with the University of Chile says the pliosaur was very similar to modern killer whales. They had large skulls, huge teeth for ripping apart victims, and limbs that acted like fins. He also added that the desert is a hotbed of fossils, with thousands, maybe even millions, of animal remains hidden deep under the surface. Number 9. Merid Castle Merid Castle can be found in a dusty desert about 1,800 feet above sea level. It stands in northwestern Saudi Arabia, in the old and forgotten town of Dumat al-Jandal. It's one of the most important historical sites in the area, looking like a giant sand castle the tide forgot to wash away. It really does look like it was sculpted by a child with a bucket and a whole lot of beach sand. But of course, Merit Castle wasn't built by a kid at the beach. It was likely constructed around the 3rd century AD, right before the invasion of Zenobia, Queen of Palmyra. Historical records show that Dumat al-Jandal rebelled about 1,700 years ago, and Zenobia came to squash the rebellion, only to find herself stuck outside the walls of the massive castle and its fortifications. This was not great news for the queen, who had already brought a huge amount of the Roman East under her control. She even annexed Egypt in 270 and had taken control of Anatolia in 271. The issue was that taking control of so many areas typically resulted in pockets of rebellion. And here, at the Merit Castle, the rebels had a fortification the queen just couldn't seem to break. In the end, the queen had bigger fish to fry. She declared her son the emperor in 272, only to be swiftly defeated by the Romans. She was captured, sent to Rome as a prisoner, and stayed there the rest of her life. The Merid castle remained an important desert outpost during the emergence of Islam in the 7th century, but was gradually abandoned until it became a ruin. Would you travel through the desert to see the castle? Let me know in the comments! And now for number 8. But first, it's shout-out time! I wanted to give a huge thank you to David Bratcher for supporting this channel. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for more videos like these! Number 8. Somalian Meteorite Crash Scientists recently discovered a pair of minerals completely new to our planet. These two minerals were never found on Earth before, and came from a meteorite that crash-landed in the desert of Somalia. The meteorite was found near the town of El Ali, and it's positively massive. This thing is almost 7 feet long, just shy of 4.5 feet tall and 3.3 feet wide. It also weighs an astounding 16.8 tons, or about 33,000 pounds. This puts it in the top 10 for largest fallen things ever found on the planet. It's believed the meteorite is very old, seeing as such a thing bursting through the atmosphere would have undoubtedly caught someone's attention. It would have hit the ground with the force of a bomb, so scientists think it must be extremely old. It was only dug out of the ground because a mining company had prospectors digging for rare minerals. A small chunk of the meteorite was recently sent to the University of Alberta. There, researchers began looking at the composition of the rock. That was when they uncovered unknown minerals. Scientists with the University of Alberta's Electron Microbe Laboratory identified two minerals that had never been seen in nature before. Chris Hurd, one of the scientists involved in the study, said he was floored by what they found. There are only about 4,000 minerals that researchers know about, 
and so even two new additions is a huge deal. We don't really know what the minerals are going to be good for yet. We only have two small samples of them, which isn't a lot to go on. We don't know if they could help in future technology or how prevalent they are in the universe. Scientists even believe they may have a third mineral identified, but they are still studying to confirm. Number 7. Treasures in Chihuahua In the Mexican state of Chihuahua, scientists spent the last year, give or take a few months, digging holes in the desert. The holes and trenches dug by researchers were part of an effort to uncover lost ancient artifacts. Amazingly, their efforts paid off. Scientists have discovered pottery shards, pieces of stone, kernels from maize, and even shell beads from the Pacific Ocean over 250 miles away. Most of the excavations occurred south of Casas Grandes, an ancient city that thrived here 800 years ago. Casas Grandes has always been intriguing because the city was built in a desert valley. This was a place with almost no water, and yet people found a way to thrive. There was a population of at least 4,000 people in the city itself, with thousands more in long-lost settlements that have been erased by the desert over the centuries. Researchers wanted to find traces of the lost settlements. That was why they were digging holes all throughout the desert here, trying to find vestiges of the desert people who manipulated the landscape almost 1,000 years ago. The bottom line is that archaeologists now know there was a huge population here. They have found evidence of multiple occupied sites in the desert valley stretching away from Casas Grandes. What they can't understand is why so many people lived here. There appears to have been multiple periods of urbanization. In other words, people kept coming back to the desert ecosystem and rebuilding cities. They clearly had some knowledge that allowed them to live in such brutal conditions. Either that, or they were gluttons for punishment. Why do you think people kept building in this particular spot in the desert for so long? Number 6. Shipwreck in the Desert In the Namibian desert, diamond miners found a ship that crashed 500 years ago on the coastline. And while the skeleton coast of Africa may be famous for its broken shipwrecks, this one was truly shocking. It contained an estimated $13 million worth of gold coins. The discovery was made on the coast in April of 2008 by the mining company De Beers. It was lost for five centuries because it was beneath the floor of the ocean itself. The mining site was in the surf zone, a place where the desert meets the ocean waves. It's an extremely volatile area that would be impossible to mine without modern technology. The miners built a massive seawall parallel to the beach, which formed a lagoon. They then pumped the seawater from the lagoon to make a dry space where they could mine. But when they drained the lagoon, they found the shipwreck and its amazing fortune. They didn't even need to do any mining, and they'd already found $13 million. Dr. Dieter Noli from the Southern Africa Institute of Marine Archaeological Research said he wasn't really surprised. Portuguese sailors used to call this stretch of coastline the Gates of Hell because of how dangerous it was. This particular ship likely sank around 1535. Researchers think it was the Bom Jesus, on its way to India with 44,000 pounds of copper and a huge load of gold and ivory tusks. Number 5. Lost History in Syria There is a very strange mystery in the Syrian desert. In 2009, Robert Mason from the Royal Ontario Museum was investigating an ancient monastery when he came across some rock formations. These rock formations were obviously much older than the monastery itself, dating back an estimated 10,000 years. Mason, a seasoned archaeologist, was shocked by this revelation. He did some more digging and found even more stone formations in the nearby desert that may have been used as Neolithic animal traps. Although the region is dry today, it was much greener thousands of years ago. It was green enough that early humans would have come here to hunt animals. The monastery where Mason made these discoveries is called Der Mar Musa, and it too is full of mystery. The monastery was built around the 4th century AD, occupied until the 1800s, and then utterly decimated by earthquakes. 
It wasn't until the 1990s that the monastery was repaired and became active again. But Mason believes the monastery is even older and was used as a Roman watchtower to survey the desert near Damascus. Number 4. Strange New Species Scientists recently discovered a new species of animal thriving in one of the hottest places on the planet. A new kind of arthropod was found living in the blistering heat of Iran's Lut Desert. It's a kind of crustacean, like a shrimp, something you would typically expect to find living in the ocean. Dr. Hussein Rajay said finding such a creature in a hot and dry environment is sensational. The discovery was made during an ecological mission to understand the diversity of the Lut Desert. Researchers couldn't believe their eyes when they found a tiny crustacean living in the suffocating heat. It was found in a seasonal lake, a kind of oasis within the desert. But it's still extremely bizarre because the lake isn't always there. It dries up and only comes back during the wet season. And during times of drought, the lake vanishes for years at a time. And yet these crustaceans, these little itty-bitty shrimps, have managed to adapt. They can survive up to several decades in the dried sediment as they wait for rain to fill the lake basin with water. Number 3. The Lost Lords of the Sahara The Sahara Desert is the biggest hot desert on the planet. The deserts of Antarctica and the Arctic are technically bigger, but those are classified as cold. The Sahara is a brutal nightmare, not a place most people want to live. And yet, there has been a population here for as long as civilization has been around. One of the oldest groups who call the Sahara Desert their home are the Tuaregs. They live in the desert now and have been there for thousands of years. The Tuareg get their name from the city of Targa, found in the sweltering desert of South Libya. It's not exactly clear when they started living in the desert, as our historical records really only go back so far. In the 5th century BC, Greek historian Herodotus wrote of a Libyan tribe called the Garamantes. These may have been the ancestors of the modern Tuaregs, nomads who wandered across the desert on camels. According to the Tuareg legends, their origin can be traced back to the 3rd century AD with Queen Tin Henan. As you can see, there are a lot of discrepancies over when these people conquered the desert. Some even say they founded the city of Timbuktu in Niger in the 11th century. Number 2. Old Dongola The desert capital of Old Dongola can be found in northern Sudan. It's located on the eastern banks of the Nile River and was once home to the mighty rulers of the Kingdom of Makuria. This great kingdom rose to power in the 5th century, after the Kushite Empire of Nubia collapsed. The Kushites were the ones who made some of the most breathtaking pyramids in Nubia, many of which still survive today in the ancient city of Meroe. Old Angola reached its peak in the 10th or 11th century, around 500 years after it was founded. What began as a humble city built on the walls of a crumbling fortress soon became a major urbanized town. All around the fortress walls were small communities of desert dwellers. There were also palaces, huge churches, and a whole industry dedicated to serving the caravans that brought trading goods in and out of the region. Today, very little remains of what was a mighty kingdom that lasted longer than the original Roman Empire. Although they reached their peak by the 11th century, they continued to function as a society until the 14th century. It was only when the Arabs attacked that Old Angola found itself in trouble. The desert city may even have survived if they hadn't been ravaged by the plague and everybody died. Number 1. The Silk Road Archaeologists in the desert wasteland between Israel and Jordan recently made an amazing discovery. A team of researchers from the Israel Antiquities Authority found traces of cotton and silk fabrics from 1300 years ago. They believe these fabrics were imported from India and China along the Silk Road. The Silk Road was one of the greatest trading networks that ever existed. It was a road that went all the way from the farthest reaches of China to the gates of Rome. Huge parts of it stretched across deadly deserts. Merchants traveled along the network with exotic goods, 
dropping them off at various cities and making a huge profit. Silk textiles were particularly lucrative and made merchants wealthy during the Silk Road's 1,500 years of existence. The Silk Road even continued to function during the death of the Roman Empire, the Black Death that ravaged Europe, and the rampaging Mongol hordes. Researchers found traces of fabrics from the 7th century AD in the Arava Desert. We know many of the fabrics came from India because of the way they were designed. The designs on the fabrics look similar to wall paintings from the 6th century found in India's Ajanta Caves. The fabrics were probably on their way from India to ancient Nubia, south of Egypt, when for some unknown reason they got lost in the desert. Thanks for watching! If you had to be stuck in any desert on Earth for a whole week, which one do you think you could survive in? Let me know in the comments below! Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time! Bye!